Just two weeks ago, Chris Paul was having trouble dribbling the ball, mishandling it, and flat out struggling to even pass half court. His injury was bothering him so much that he even needed assistance in taking off his warm up shirt. But now we see him crossing over and completely faking out defenders like he did against Millsap. And one of his signature moves last night against Jokic to put a cap on a phenomenal series for him. It's official, the point guard is 100% back and he makes the Phoenix Suns extremely dangerous. What up everybody, my name is Stefan and this is Heat Check. Let's get into it. When you see the 14 of 19 shooting, which is almost 74%, and especially when you see the shooting chart with all of this activity on the right wing, you know that CP3 is in his bag, operating at full capacity. A lot of these are his go-to moves. First, you got the double screen to attack Jokic, and with this much space to shoot, you know that one of the best mid-range shooters in NBA history is going to knock this down. Again, another right side screen goes to his favorite spot, shoots and scores. This was especially noticeable in the second half where the Suns literally killed the Nuggets with the high screen for CP and there was no adjustment so Chris just went there time after time and swished shot after shot. Then to keep the defense guessing, we got the pick on the left side and he does his famous snake dribble where you see the S motion sort of like a snake, again to that right side elbow and another bucket. Again, same thing, left side screen, snakes to the right, Jokic is helpless and you see the result. He briefly touched on this and explained how he got it to a point where he's automatic with it. How important is the mid-range game still in the game well, of basketball? important to me. You know, some years ago, uh, when I played with the Clippers, the whole league went to this drop defense. You know what I mean? And I was like, if that's what y'all gonna give up, I'm gonna try to perfect it. You know, but it's not about that. I'm so grateful to my family, my team. A couple years ago, they was writing me off, you can't do this, and this ain't about me, it's about us show you what you can do when you come together as a team. We got a great team over there and it's a lot, of, a lot of fun to be a part of it. What I'm trying to say is that this looks a lot different than the previous series where you could clearly see him deferring to other guys and being on the court strictly as a leader. He simply couldn't make shots but more important than that, he couldn't take them because of the limitations of his injury. And we can clearly see that in the numbers. 28 minutes per game, just 9 points on 38.5% shooting. Compare that to 35 and a half minutes and 25 and a half points per game on 62 and a half percent from the field. The 37 points in game 4 are actually the most he scored in any game since May of 2018. That's crazy. But what's crazier is that dude even had a game with 15 assists and 0 turnovers. Not a single one. Again, you remember how he looked just 2 weeks ago, right? This is how I dribble with my right hand, so I was extremely worried and with a good reason. I don't want him to dribble like me. I think it's safe to say that not only the numbers suggest that he's back, but also the eye test as well. You see the difference in the body language, you see the moving and grooving on the court, he definitely got his mojo back. And the result is evident, a sweep. Surprisingly, this is the first one in his career. At least the first one where he's on the winning end of it. And he doesn't plan on stopping now. I guess the only doubt that I have left in regards to Chris is the same one that Chuck and Kenny had. But thankfully, Devin Booker cleared the air. Take a look. Answer a question for me and Kenny. We got a little argument. When, when uh, CP3 broke away on that layup late in the game, do you, can he still dunk? That's why I got on him. I, I don't know if he can dunk off one leg. He can for sure dunk though. He can for sure dunk, but I, I went to him right after that play, I told him, you gotta get on the rim, bro. You gotta get on the rim one time for us. So yeah, the point guard did the unthinkable and came all the way back to 100% from an injury that looked bad and had some serious consequences on him the days after. A one-of-a-kind competitor and leader. That's it for now. Subscribe and talk to in the next one. Peace out. Let me see my mid-range in the honor of Chris Paul.